Hi, it's Sandy once again. And um, for the first time ever, there's been a real prompting from the Roses to uh, step forward and do a little top up reading um, of another level of insight that they offered me as I tuned in into them, you know, into in this um, full moon window. And it's very interesting, you know, when you, when you look at the roses on an individual basis, they have one particular thread and story. But what it feels to me is that these three roses have got something more that they're wanting to show us. And after various conversations with, um, with friends last evening, um, there was a sense of a, another pattern that was emerging in this time that is calling us um, to really look again at, at our patterns and our, our, um, our journey, really. Uh, so just I thought I'd do this top up so that it would give you an insight as to how I'm looking at these three roses as um, as a group that can offer us a yet another insight into this coming time, particularly between this full moon and the new moon um, as we come to the end of, of January. So these three roses together, when I looked at them yesterday, the, each one of them had this dense center, this complexity within the center of her. And it, what she, she, wasn't, she wasn't revealing her golden heart to us as some of the other roses do. They were, each one of them were saying, no, that this is complex. There are, there, are, you know, there are things that need to be dealt with here or you need to dive deep into the complexity of the patterns and the stories that you're running or that we as humanity are running as a collective. So I just thought I'd look at them again with you and just share the little insights um, that were coming up in this sort of next level of understanding these roses. So this first one, the one that was rose card one is Rose Angel Four. And as I explained, she sits on the pineal gland. She's one of the agents of transformation or one of the way showers. She holds the coding of transformation between judgment and um, forgiveness. And this place where we're being called to dive deep. I mean, she's, she's open, but there's complexity in that for, to dive deep, to actually look at our patterns and our stories you know, what is it that's that's still running for us that we need to get in and really have a look at? And we've got filters, you know, we've got filters that create the judgments of good and bad, right and wrong, him and her. You know, it, part of our, of our coming into this 3D experience is that we experience this duality. But in the movement back into the unified field, back into... The, the up and into the fifth dimensional field of frequency to bring that down into our <clears throat> into our physical bodies, we're actually being asked to, to clear out all of these residual um, storylines that tell us that something's good or something's not good. And, you know, there is a trust in, at, to another level that, that actually the universe is in divine order. What we're experiencing and what's unfolding for us at this point is just perfect it is it's in perfect alignment for each of us on a soul level but also what's going on here at a collective level so you know this this rose sitting on the third eye is the center of higher will it's where the divine imprint comes in um and runs through our filters of whether we are prepared to follow what we're getting, what the insight is, what the inspiration is. You know, can we be pure vessels for divine inspiration or are we going to run it through our filters and through our judgments and say, you know, you know I'm, not, I'm not interested in engaging. Or are we going to go to the place of, of discernment of actually, well, this is an alignment for me, and then drop it down to the solar plexus, which is the center of 
personal will. It's the, it's the center in which we can take these energies out in the world and be way showers and guides for others. So it feels to me with this rose, the other level of the guidance is that we go in. We go in and we show up in order to clear the, the places where we still hold this dualistic thinking or, or um, process. You know, that we look and say, what's the message here? What am I being shown through the experience? And, and where does my, my process need to take me for my own healing and for me to be a conduit um, for others um, in, that come into my, in my pathway? So when we add that to Rose Angel 5, who sits on the throat chakra, is the transformer. She holds the transformational coding between um, denial and truth, where we are called to speak our truth. Now, this chakra has got a direct connection to the sacral chakra, and the sacral chakra holds the imprint. You know, the sacral chakra nestles into the base chakra. Base chakra says, you know, here I am, this is my tribe, I've arrived, you know, this is my place. When we go up into the sacral chakra, this is what Jung would call the individuation. Who am I inside the tribe? What's my truth? How do I, how do I fit? How, what, what gifts do I bring? And how much self-love, self-appreciation and self-value will I bring to those gifts? in order to bring them up through the body and speak my truth. So, you know, this is all connected. This is all of these energies are linked in our process of being able to be way showers and guides and uh, voices of this, of, of this time, you know, where we can uh, inspire and light up um, others in our process. So, you know, this is um, very much looking at where we have resistance and where we still have issues about speaking our truth. You know, it's so important that we are prepared, particularly in this, you know, this new energy of 217 to be able to show up, to be able to be present to ourselves, to our own emotional um, processes, but also to be there and be present for others. And then there was rose card three, and, and this is rose 10. And if you remember yesterday, I was talking about her sitting on the navel chakra and the fact that she is so much connected to the, uh, our connection from our um, solar plex, our navel chakra, sorry, into the umbil up through the umbilical cord and into the placenta of the mother. And actually, um, Maya, who's uh, one of the, the women that's been really connected with the Rose story from New Jersey, um, popped a message um, with regard to yesterday's uh, video around this Rose and it's her connection into the mother line. And when I'm working with her and when I'm working with groups, it's like you take that energy from the umbilical cord to the placenta of the mother. So it's like you go back into that program because 70% of our emotional imprint comes over the placenta. And then we can take that one step further and we can put our mother into the womb of her mother and her mother and her mother. So it becomes like Russian dolls, if you like, you know, but from that point, we go right, right up to the great mother there can only be one source line that comes down all the way through and it's like what's the coding that's come on that line what is the particular issue that you have come uniquely to bring into this present moment to transform to work with what was your contract in coming into this particular birth family and you know, where you came in with your, your particular gifts and your uh, experiences from previous incarnations, but with this area of self-mastery that you were seeking. 
So you would have embedded into the genetic coding of the family of origin. And we know that whatever happens to us with, as children between the ages of, uh, particularly up to the age of five or seven, has part of a karmic imprint that we contracted to come back and unravel, to heal. So when we step into this place of owning the story up through the, the female family line, and for, for, for people like myself, uh, and I've got a daughter who's got daughters, you go back, you go in again, you can start to see how the storyline threads through. And it's a, it's a slightly different energy when we're looking at the male energy line. And I'll speak about that at, an, at another point. I'm sure I'll be given the opportunity. So, you know, this has also got a connection into, you know, how we feel about mother mothering, but also what, what we feel about our connection to Mother Earth. How we embed from this place down into the Earth Star and how that connects into where we live on the planet. <clears throat> so it's like, where have you been drawn to activate? Where have you been drawn to be in the right place at the right time, holding this frequency for your community? So it's been an interesting you know, journey since I did the rose reading yesterday. And you know, what else is coming up? And, and we are in this cooking pot, you know, when it comes up for us now, um, you know, we're being called to action. We're being called <clears throat> to our own action, <laughs> to our own uh, looking at what the story is here that's coming up for us to clear, but also how we sit into the matrix of our global family. And, you know, what is the peace that we come forward to, to fully blossom, to fully show up with beauty and presence, just like the rose. Each rose is unique. Each rose is individual. She doesn't want to be a daffodil. She doesn't want to be a tulip. You know, she just steps forward <clears throat> in truth to be who she is. So I hope you've enjoyed that extra little insight into the roses for this time. Um, as I say, it's been nudging at me this morning. So once more, with love and rosy blessings, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.